We're back, and I'm very pleased to say we're joined for the first time by a woman I admire greatly. Her name is Rebecca Weber. She is the chief executive officer of a terrific grassroots organization, the Association of Mature American Citizens. They're known as AMAC. It is the conservative alternative to the leftist-dominated AARP. She is also the editor-in-chief of the organization's publication, AMAC Advantage, and the host of its Better for America podcast, on which I've been privileged to appear. Full disclosure, I'm a new member of AMAC and a big fan of its work, including that of its spokesman, former Assistant Secretary of State Robert Charles, whom we're privileged to have as a regular contributor to this program. Rebecca Weber, it's so good to have you with us. Welcome. Thank you, Frank. It's it's a real honor to be here with you. Thank you. We're going to talk I hope with you, Rebecca, about both your own thoughts on the topics at hand, but also those of your members um, for whom you speak very effectively. I want to talk about it in the context of political warfare and something that Ronald Reagan warned about decades ago. He talked about every generation facing an existential threat to freedom. And he warned that if we did not rise to such threats in our time, that we would wind up telling our children and our children's children what it was like to live in the United States when men were free. I know you and your organization are committed to ensuring that's not our fate, but talk a little bit, if you would, about kind of how members of AMAC view this issue, this challenge of defending our country against those who would take it down, transform it beyond recognition through political warfare and, well, other means of subversion. Yeah, thank you so much. What a great question, Frank, because the real threat to democracy, uh, in my view, is the left's ruthless agenda to really rule or ruin. Uh, What do I mean by that? Well, their attitude is, if you don't uh, carry the left's vision of democracy, then, well, it's not a democracy and it's not legitimate. And I believe that Democrats already believe that because of their failure of uh, HR1, which was one of their ways that they would rule, uh, that is off the table. That was the federal takeover of our elections. Uh, The real question now is what are they going to do when they're left with only the option of ruin? Uh, And uh, I love your quote by Reagan. I also, it reminds me of another A famous quote, liberty once lost is lost forever. Uh, When the people once surrender their share in the legislature and their right of defending the limitations upon the government and of resisting every encroachment upon them, they can never regain it. And those were words written by John Adams. Uh, And so that is really, those words I think ring true today. And AMAC members are recognizing that today our nation is facing unprecedented challenges Uh, Frank, we're seeing everything from election integrity, conservative censorship, uh, vaccines, uh, mandates, passports, mask mandates for young children, surging crime levels across the country and a border uh, that's not secure. I think that the massive overspending by the Biden administration uh, has fueled uh, runaway inflation. Uh, We see skyrocketing gas prices. And so um, AMAC members see it, Frank. They're saying when Trump left office, America was energy independent. But Biden, really on his very first day in office, he signed an executive order revoking the permit for the Keystone XL pipeline. And so now now that Biden is uh, looking to other countries like Venezuela for oil, AMAC members are saying, wait a minute, what about us? We the people. Uh, We've got to be focusing on protecting our great liberties and the values that make this country great. And that's exactly what we're doing here at AMAC. But there's a lot of work ahead of us. Well, I want to talk to you about that work. But first, uh, just to drill down on a couple of those really important points of the sort of context in which we're having this conversation. Uh, You know, I, I agree with everything you said, and I'm sure your members do as well, Rebecca, with the possible exception of it seems to me as though the Biden administration is kind of going for rule and ruin in the the damage that they're doing to our country, um, even as they profess to govern it, is almost incalculable in all of those areas. And I I would add one other item to the list, and I I know it was 
meant to be illustrative, but it was pretty comprehensive. But one that you didn't mention is the Marxist strategy of dividing and conquering. And it takes the form particularly these days, as you know, of what's been called critical race theory that um, we're seeing our children indoctrinated with, uh, the military is being subjected to, um, and our country more generally. Um, talk a little bit about that, if you would, and, and how AMAC members who are concerned not only about you know, what's happening in our present generation, but what it means for the next. We're saying about that. Yeah, th that that is so important. And we actually poll our members. We poll our members. We take our marching orders from our over 2.4 million members. And I said to them, I, well, I said to my team, let's ask them how they feel on critical race theory. And so the team put together a really comprehensive poll. And we learned that AMAC members, uh, mainly anybody can join AMAC, but most are 50 and older, said help to stop the indoctrination of our children in our school systems because they truly recognize that they are the future of our nation. And uh, they're the ones who will be left to carry the, court, the, the torch. What I find interesting about critical race theory, Frank, is the left's refusal to acknowledge that it even exists. And when you are working in a country uh, alongside people who refuse to, um, to see your side, and uh, if you don't, uh, essentially, they just cancel you. That's a way to not get any work done. And so AMAC members are saying, what can we do? And so we're encouraging people to participate. When you see something, say something. Make sure you're talking and engaged with your children. I think that the pandemic has largely helped parents see through a lot of what their kids were being taught in school. Uh, but I also think parents and grandparents are stepping up and they're they're volunteering for their for their school board. They're showing up at meetings and they're speaking out. Um, we we want to make sure that we're not going along with these big institutions that are demanding we do things their way. Or again, uh, they say we'll cancel you, we'll destroy your your uh, what you thought this looked like beyond our recognition almost. And so we're seeing that with critical race theory. We're seeing how, how youth are being taught things like um, there's more than one gender. You can be a boy, a girl, or any of the other multitude of genders. And we know that that goes against science. And we also see that it's, it's just so unhealthy because, you know, Frank, as a mother and a grandmother, I like to remind my children every day that they are wonderfully made by an all-powerful God who gives each and every one of us beautiful strengths and um our diversity is what really makes us such a wonderful nation that we're all so different. We bring different gifts to the table. And so we're going backwards when we try to get our children to embrace this dangerous way of thinking that we should we should judge people based on how they look, not yes. on the merit of their character. Uh, the color of their skin, as it were, going back That's to Martin right. Luther King. I, I'm so glad you mentioned institutions. Uh, in my commentary today, uh, Rebecca, I talk about the march, the long march through the institutions that has been underway at the hands of the left now for decades. And cultural Marxism, I think, is really what it amounts to. Uh, an institution that they're at the cusp of penetrating is perhaps the last that has felt their direct effect, namely the Supreme Court. And I just wonder what your members are thinking about, if you've polled them or what you assess they are thinking about, um, this uh, judge uh, Catania Brown Jackson, and and in particular a piece that that again goes to the heart of what you were just saying about our children. Um, her practice, uh, it seems, a sort of inveterate leniency that she has felt towards those who are engaged in, or at least purveying, um, you know, pornography about child rape and torture and other forms of sexual abuse. It's unimaginable to me that such a person would be on the Supreme Court of the United States. What do your members think? Well, you know, our members are smart. They've got a lot of real good common sense. And so let's start when Senator Marsha Blackburn first said, could you provide a definition for the word woman? And when Jackson responded, no, I can't. I'm not a biologist. Uh, that's a red flag right there. Um, and moreover, I think Senator uh, Ted Cruz, uh, he revealed uh, since 2019 that she served on a school board of trustees in Georgetown Day School. 
Now, what's really interesting about this, uh, Jackson, I believe she expressed that she was unaware of some of the materials that were being shared, uh, but she did say that she witnessed a transformative power of rigorous progressive education that's dedicated to fostering critical thinking, independence, social change, and social justice. Uh, What I'd like to say to that is that um, let's look at what uh, the types of books that Georgetown Day School assigns. And, and uh, this was all uncovered that they are assigning the Ibram Kendi, How to Be an Anti-Racist, uh, and other books that support uh, critical race theory. So our concern is, um, is it far-fetched for us to think uh, that Jackson uh, may uh, see herself as someone who, you know, Uh, embraces critical race theory. We know she gave a speech. Now, this was in January of 2020. She gave a speech praising Derrick Bell. Now, Derrick Bell is widely considered to be the father of CRT, critical race theory. So for these reasons, Frank, our members feel that she probably um, is fitting Joe Biden's uh, description of of the person he wanted to find, a a black female. But isn't it interesting that female or woman was one of the checkboxes uh, on Biden's list, yet Jackson herself could not define to us what a female is. Yeah, we we have to leave it at that, Rebecca, I'm sorry to say. And uh, it goes on from there. We'll talk a bit more about it with our next guest, George Raceley, as a matter of fact. But I so appreciate Uh, both your leadership at AMAC, what you're doing with your podcast and uh, your visits with us. I hope there'll be many of them to come in the near future. In the meantime, keep up the great work at the Association for Mature American Citizens. Next up, George Raceley. We'll talk with him, a very accomplished political campaigner. 